hello guys you're welcome to my youtube channel my name is vera you guys today i'll be talking about something that's really bothering me as a mother it's somehow off what i talk about in my channel but it's still part of motherhood or let me say parenthood it's about our kids and social media it's about our neglect towards our children maybe later in the video i'm going to share a few ways that we can help our kids and protect them from evil that comes with social media so there's this video that has been circulating online yeah i got it on whatsapp about two little girls i don't think that the two girls are up to 12 years one was filming herself dancing and whining naked while the other one was filming herself doing nasty nasty things that i can't even say to her private parts with a baby doll there's so many videos like that out there of course, why we know this one is because they filmed themselves and shared it. What about those who didn't? I'm not talking just about girl child, but our kids, both boys and girls. It's about kids who are cyber bullied, those who couldn't take it, couldn't speak to anyone until they committed suicide. What about kids who buy drugs online and nobody knew until they died of overdose? What about kids being molested? Some are molested right under their parents' nose. The pedophile uncles, parents, teachers, cousins, especially those lured by strangers they met online. Just so many cases that I can't mention all. Bad things happening to our kids and I'm just like, what is going on? What is going on? Are we as parents doing our parts? Are we protecting our kids from what they might get themselves involved online? If yes, are we doing enough? I know that most behavior might be learned in school or bad friends' environment. I know that, but I'm concentrating on our kids and social media, how we can protect our kids from evil associated with social media. And I still ask, what is going on? Parents, what are we not doing right? How have we tried to keep our kids safe generally? How much attention do we pay to our kids, especially their activities online? Most times, we are so busy with our career, our jobs, so concerned with making money that we forget the most important job that we have as parents, which is taking care of our kids. Let me tell you something. You will be judged as a parent if you fail to do everything that you can to protect and give your kids the love and attention that they deserve. If you get so selfish that you focus on every other thing in your life but your kids. They didn't ask to be born. Whether you planned having kids or mistakenly it happened, it's not a reason. Because you having unprotected sex only means that you're ready to dedicate the rest of your life taking care of another human and teaching them morals too. I always say that if you know that you won't be emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially available for your kids, you should be careful and try not to have one or have them when you're fully ready because parenthood is a big task. It's a full-time job. You need to know that when considering having kids. There's actually no pay. I know that. But the reward that comes with parenthood is huge. If you raise a good kid, not just for you, for, the, for themselves, the society, their generation. Please, let's take it serious. Let's take it serious. As a parent, your number one duty is your child, whether you like it or not. If your job won't let you spend time with your kids, then it's not worth it. I'm not saying you should be jobless because you need money to take care of your kids. But if you have a job that requires you to leave early in the morning and come back midnight for maybe six or seven days in a week, if your job is the type that you're always out of state, your company keeps sending you on business trips away from your kids, most times you're out for weeks, months, and then you try to justify it by buying them gifts. You buy them even without them asking. They have everything, gadgets, toys, whatever. You allow them to stay online all the time and all you do is speak with them on phone. You think you're giving them the best. You're not. It's time to make a change. Make that sacrifice for your kids. And when you have time with your kids, make it count. Spend quality time with your kids. If you're always busy with your phone or, or whatever that you're dealing with, that you send your kids to their room, leaving them with gadgets, 
they stay online without any supervision just so you can have time to do your thing. You need to have everything. You should consider making a change because you're not only allowing them to learn how to live and behave online, both good, bad and ugly. You're also giving them reason to confide and learn from strangers they met online. If it's your job, you need to cut some hours, stay at home, especially weekends, or find a job that requires less hours, or be an entrepreneur, but try and make out time for your kids. Let's do better. You should not just be a parent to your kids. You should also be their friend, teacher, confident, always listen, be there, be their protector. Make them know you are there and will always be there for them. Let us do more to secure the future of our kids for us the society at large, at least one of the parents, be it the dad or mom, especially the mom, dedicate more time to your kids. Imagine the two girls in that video. I watched it and the first thing that came to my mind was the parents. Those kids were not born with the crazy behavior. It's either they have seen people do that or they have, you know, watched it online and nobody to monitor them. And being the child that they are, they felt it's okay to film and share with the world. Again, let us do more. I also want to commend parents who, even in their busy careers, still put their kids first. Those who have resigned to stay home with the kids or have made changes with their jobs. Some who have become entrepreneurs just because of their kids. Keep it up. I pray that our efforts will not be in vain. So I have some tips that will help you to keep your kids safe from social media. If you have time with your kids, you probably want some control over what they do online. Think about the internet as a big city, but without an adequate place first. That's where you as a parent comes in. So my number one tip is be social network savvy. You need to educate yourself on ways to be safe on social networks so that you can be able to give the best advice to your children Sign up to the social networks and apps your children are using and find out how to use the privacy settings and reporting mechanisms. Talk about how they can stay safe on social networks, including talking to a trusted person when they are worried and being aware of what constitutes online bullying, both as a perpetrator and as a victim. If your child uses social networks, be sure they know how to report inappropriate or offensive posts, block someone, and also keep information private. The number two tip is keep screens and devices where you can see them. Always monitor your child's time online. Sneak up on them, particularly the younger children. Let them know that it's for their security. Keep the computer in a central spot on the home where it's easy to keep an eye on what your child is doing and viewing online. For mobile devices, you can set them to forget Wi-Fi passcodes so that your children cannot go online without you knowing. You can also try to make an agreement with them that there are no laptops, tablets, or gaming in bedrooms. For younger children, you might also consider maybe checking their browser histories after your child has been online to see what sites they are visiting. This approach obviously gets harder as children grow older and work out how to clear histories. That is why it's very, very, very important to open the lines of communication about internet use at an early age. Then the third tip would be schedule screen time limits for kids and their devices. You might feel like your kids shuffle from one screen to the next throughout the day. Spending time with their smartphones, tablets, laptops, and TVs, you might Consider limiting and enforcing the number of hours per day or week your kids can use devices, the types of devices they can use, and what types of activities they can do or programs they can watch. Talk with your kids so they can start understanding media literacy and practicing self-regulation. It's also a good way to discover what they like doing online, as well as suggest new TV shows and apps that's okay for their age limits to watch. Then the fourth tip will be know your parental controls. Very important. Sometimes innocent searches online can lead to not so innocent results. So it's wise to know how to use the parental control search restrictions offered by web browsers, internet service provider and devices. For example, 
The safe search filter feature on Google will block sites with explicit sexual material. To turn it on, go to the settings slash safe search filters. Also, register their Gmail for their office yourself. Use their right age. That way, registration is added by default. And log in the Gmail on your phone so that you can see all their history from your phone. Although it's not 100% guarantee, parental controls can help prevent your child from seeing and assessing most violent or sexual materials. There is a web page on my screen right now. We'll also leave it on my description box. Copy it and go and check it out. Okay. If you can pay for security tools and features that offers extra protection and control, that would be good too. The fifth one will be talk openly with your child about their online activity. As soon as your child starts accessing the internet, talk to them about what they are reading, watching and who they are communicating with online. And try to keep the conversation going as they grow older. Ask your child what sites they visit or apps they use. Write a list and look at them together. Talk to your child about what you think is appropriate and remind them that this may be different for other parents and their children. Listen to your child and reach an agreement about what is right for your family. Remember, the time will come when they will assess the internet outside the safety of your home and you want them to be prepared for that. It's vital to teach them about their online reputation too and how they must be careful about how they behave, interact with people and represent themselves in such a public forum. They must always remember that the internet isn't private. In conclusion, I know that keeping tabs on what your kids do online requires efforts. Even so, it's a good idea to take steps to monitor who they are talking to, where they go to and what they consume and download. It's also a good idea to periodically discuss online citizenship and whether your kids still agree with the house rules. The goal is helping the kids stay safe online while building safe and smart online habits. Also helping them to not deviate from the good morals you instilled in them. If you find yourself spending more time with your kids at home by choice or necessity, you'll be glad that you took the time to guide them. In my next video, I will share other ways that you can keep your kids safe from social media. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel, like and share this video. Continue to stay safe, show kindness anywhere you are, and I'll see you guys soon.